standard version. right now. All right, good morning, everyone. How are we doing? You ready to start worship this morning? Hey, Amen. We're going to start by singing and different ways we worship here at church, right? One way to worship is just to gather as God's people, right? You come together under one roof, you gather, you, you fellowship, you, you interact, you talk, you sh share war stories, right? We have an opportunity to pray corporately. We have an opportunity to sing songs of worship to our Lord and Savior. We have an opportunity to hear from his word. Amen. We have an opportunity to give back a portion he's blessed us with through giving and uh, through the offering. Right? So many ways we're going to worship the Lord this morning. We're going to begin by singing. We're going to worship in song. And I'm going to ask that if you're able to stand and sing these first two songs with us. We all, we all are grateful for many things. Amen. Grateful for many things. So this song is just more of a meditative kind of song. It's repetitious, but it's just an expression of our gratitude to God and all that he's done for us. And then we're just going to sing another repetitive type song that just expresses our love of God. Amen? So the first one is Give Thanks with a Grateful Heart. Give Thanks with a Grateful Heart. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ his son. I'll sing that again. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ his son. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done for us. Sing it again. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done. Amen. We are 
are thankful for all he's done in our life. Amen? Amen. All right, sing with me now. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. And I lift my voice to worship you, O oh my soul. Rejoice, take joy, my King, in what you hear. We exalt you, Lord, and we lift our voice to worship you, O oh, my soul. Rejoice, take joy, my King, in what you hear. May it be a sweet. for the opportunity we have to come and gather this morning, Father. We live in a nation where we can, a nation that allows for free will, Father, for free worship, Father, and free choice, Lord. Lord, it's a place where our predecessors, Father, those who came and founded this land came in search of freedom, Father, freedom to worship as they wanted to without persecution, Lord. This nation was founded with one of those premises in mind, Father. And Lord, we're still, to this day, honoring that, Father. Lord, in our neighborhoods, we have people of different faiths living. We may have a Muslim next door. We may have a Lutheran down the road. We may have a Methodist or a Pentecostal, Lord, living within our block, Father. And yet, somehow or another, we, we still come together, Father as one, Lord, as one nation, Lord. Father, I just pray, Lord, that you would allow us to continue that freedom, Father. There's also a choice not to worship, Father, and not to, not to pursue a faith system, and that's fine too, Lord. Lord, let us be a beacon, Father, and the proper beacon of light, Lord, to our communities here, Lord. Not Bible-thumping lights, Father, but lights that would encourage others to want to share that faith, Lord. Father, that should be the essence of who we are as Christians, Lord. There's certainly intentionality, Father, but really when we do things from the heart, when we've been transformed, Lord, we share what we have with others because we, we love others and we see the need. We interact with others because we love our fellow man, Father. So, Father, we 
we help out a family that's in need in our community because we desire to, not for any ulterior motive, but because our hearts have been transformed into the likeness of he who we worship, Jesus Christ, who roamed the earth and showed us the epitome of what it means to be Christian. Father, help us all to, to be more like Jesus, Father, in how we love others, how we love our enemies, Father, how we interact within our communities, how we act, Father, as Christians. Only you can do that through your Holy Spirit, Father. Folks like us can preach to death, Father, the way we should be, but, Father, it's all a personal decision. And I just pray, Father, that your Spirit would work in a mighty way in the hearts of those who are called Christians, so that we could come together once again and be a people who bring light to our communities. Father, guide us through these difficult times, Father. Help us, Lord. Help us in our families, Father, with our families, Lord. And Father, right now, we just especially pray, pray for Pat and her family, Father. So difficult, Lord. They're going through, Lord. Loss of a grandson, loss of a son. Father, you only know the hearts of people, Lord. And so we just ask, Father, that those of you who call yourselves Christians who put your faith in him, Father, that you would just envelop their hearts right now with your love and comfort them, Father, with tragic loss. Let love abound. Father, guide us, Lord, this morning. Keep our hearts pure, Father, and help us to just put aside any distractions we may have so that we can focus on worshiping you, Lord. It's a short time that we gather here. We, it's only for an hour, a little over an hour, Father, and we, we come together once a week only. Father, I just pray, Father, that you would just help us to focus, Lord, on you and you alone. Come and be with us and give us a sense of oneness. We pray these things in the precious name of Jesus Christ. And all God's people say, amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> amen. Good morning. How's everybody doing today? Awesome. Uh, a couple of announcements for today. Today is the day of our back to school end of the end of the summer party. Um, it's going to start at 5 o'clock, 5 to 8 p.m. Please, uh, please bring your, your lawn chairs, the swim suits, the towels, and a dish or snack to share. We're going to be there right in front of the little grass area. we got two uh, water slides. Uh, we're just going to have some fun in, in Jesus' name, right? Just uh, beat up the mosquitoes and have a lot of fun, right? I'll, I'll prep up the area, hopefully get all the mosquitoes out of the way. But if, you're, if you want to come have some fun with the family, right, just all enjoy some fellowship. Um, again, it's, it's all children, all ages. I'm rather welcome to show up. Uh, this Wednesday, we do have a youth uh, 4B service. Uh, we have a Trisha Church at 6 o'clock and 4B youth at 6, all the way to 7.30. Uh, for the 4B youth, it is 6th grade through 12th grade. For the children's ministry, it is a uh, kinder, or, I mean pre-K, not kinder, right? That'd be pretty bad. I mean, I mean first to fifth, all right? Uh, exception, my little man, he's, he's a kinder. He's growing up. Um, Again, uh, please get copies of the church prayer list. Uh, they can be found at the West Entry Foyer. We definitely believe in praying for one another, right? Uh, when something happens, it just feels so great to know that uh, the church is praying, right? Everyone's praying there. Uh, it just feels, you just feel lifted, right? You really do feel the comfort, the hugs of those prayers. Wednesday, September 7th, uh, we're going to start the adult Bible study on Wednesday. It is going to be the Fundamentals of Faith. Uh, it is this, this little uh, booklet here, uh, Fundamentals of Faith by John MacArthur, 13 Lessons to Grow in the Grace and Knowledge of Jesus Christ. I went through this when I was a teenager, uh, truly amazing. It helps us root deeper into our faith. The books are $10 each. Uh, please see uh, Brother Nick or Miss Alice about those. Nick, uh, raise your hand so everybody knows who you are. Nick is over there, yep. All right. Brother Nick's going to be leading the Wednesday's adult Bible study. Really excited to see what, what happens to there, right? Uh, just, uh, just wanting to, to pray, just, just really have a great time, right? I really believe that there is, you're never too old to learn. Uh, reading the Bible over and over and over again. I was hanging out with a gentleman uh, named Mr. Friday when I was in Campwood in the Uvalde area. And he said he's read the Bible maybe six times. He got a brand new Bible, so he's going through it again, reading it. He said, I've, I never, he said, I never stopped learning every time I read the Bible. 
you know, he kind of convicted me. You know, I was like, I usually read for, for a lesson. I usually read to, to get something else going on, how, how to bring it all together. But my goodness, God's word is everlasting, right? It's, it's a firm foundation we can live on. Um, Monday and Thursday's prayer, uh, prayer meet is in the fellowship hall at 9 a.m. It's a quick 30-minute prayer. If you have not gone to our prayer meetings, I would just suggest if you have any time in your day just uh, or in the morning to come and swing by, it's amazing hearing, hearing our church pray and, and what the prayer needs and what, what they say they want to pray for. It's truly amazing. And again, the end of the summer party today from 5 to 8 p.m. Bring your lawn chairs, swimsuits, towels, and a dish or snack to share. We're going to be cooking, I think, hot dogs and maybe hamburgers. But uh, if, it, if it's a little woohoo, right? Yeah. If it's a little potluck, that's even better, right? Because uh, less cooking for me. Uh, uh, is any other announcements I'm missing? No, I believe uh, the Badgers, they won yesterday, right? Yes, good job. Yes, Kevin's going to say something. Yes, uh, thank you, Kevin, for reminding me. Yes, the, the, the door, the front door, the entry to the church is going to be locked at 1115. Um, again, we will figure out another way. If you're running a little late after that, I'm sure you, you could call or text, or we'll have something else there to Is to our let ring you in. still working? Okay, so we'll probably implement the ring again, and that has the capability of somebody inside looking and seeing who's out there knocking, right? I hope, and, uh, and we'll be able to open the door. I hope my sister and my mom and dad aren't watching, but uh, they'll be late to their own funeral. <laughs> I love them very much. I love y'all sisters. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, Fall Festival, it is coming. Oh, my goodness. Fall is going to be busy for everyone. The Fall Festival is coming. We had our first meeting at the Essential Committee meeting. It's, it sounds like everything is rolling. We're just in, it's, it's truly the place for us to be the hands and feet for our community, right? Uh, really excited about that. If you want to plug in or want to do something, maybe man a booth. We have a, uh, the Kuipers doing their, I guess I heard that their famous popcorn, right? I think it has maybe three or four popcorn machines going. Really excited about that. We're going to be doing some games, some, some prizes, and just having some fun with the community, right? Uh, letting them know that we are here to help out. We do have fifth quarters going to be starting up. Uh, we have three away games, I believe. And then we have four home games, back to back to back to back. Um, pray for me. <laughs> that's all I can say. Uh, uh, any other announcements I'm missing? No, that's – yes, ma'am. 6 to 7.30 on Wednesday nights. Yes, 6 to 7.30 Wednesday nights, September 7th. Not this Wednesday, but next Wednesday, you can see the church happening, right? You're going to have uh, parents over there, adults over there, and kids making a lot of noise on this side. All right. <laughs> if, that's, uh, if there's no, more, no other announcements, go to stand up and greet each other. And once you hear the music playing, just come on back to your pews. Uh, great day to just fellowship and worship with one another. Amen.
righty. We're going to continue worshiping, and I'd like to do something real quick, just because um, my two daughters are here. They and they have a uh, they had birthdays. Well, Leanne's birthday's today, right, Leanne? Jennifer's was two days ago, and so they're not members here, so they didn't get to get recognized at the beginning of the month. So we're going to sing a special happy birthday to Jennifer and Leanne. All right, and. Xavier, who you know, Xavier, um, who usually is here, he's not here this morning because his sister's sick, but he had a birthday when? Yesterday. <coughs> no, today as well. That's right. My goodness. <laughs> yeah. And then she's Friday. Right. So we've got a lot of birthdays here in the family. That's why my wallet's real light right now. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Sing with me. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jennifer and Leanne. Happy birthday to you. In fact, they actually made the trip here. Uh, Leanne's in Fort Worth, Jennifer's in Austin, to come celebrate Xavier's birthday. We were at Fun Trackers yesterday. That's a cool place. Anyways, all right, we're going to continue worshiping. Um, Sing with us. You know this song, In the Garden. In the Garden. Don't you love that song? Beautiful. I come to the garden alone While the dew is still on the roses And the voice I hear Falling on my ear The Son of God discloses talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever known I'd stay in the garden with next song is Mansion Over Hilltop. And let me say something. Uh, we've had to, I've had to do two funerals here uh, very recently. One we had here and the other we had as I shared with you uh, last week in Zapata. And in both of those messages it was very fitting that and I've done it at other funerals. I, I just love this part because as you all well know um, in one case this was a lady who was in her 60s, a little premature typically for the average lifespan, and, and, and in both cases, actually. So it's difficult on a family when you lose, lose somebody that young, that soon, and in these circumstances. One of, them, one of them, I think, was to cancer. The other was to COVID. Um, and so in, in our, our, as a pastor, what we're doing is reassuring truths. We're not, we're not blowing any smoke or any kind of, you know, falseness, uh, false reassurance. We're just reiterating what the Christians should know already amen and this particular chorus is is one that i sing and and, and it's just to remind them because in the message it it talks about where their loved ones are in the presence of the lord right and i've got a mansion you know when i first heard this i thought oh how vain you know <laughs> somebody's really wanting gold and mansions and whatever but there's something else more beautiful uh, at, at, 
at, at the heart of this song. And it's just a reminder of where we're heading. So sing with us. We're going to sing all three verses. And the chorus is what we typically sing at the funeral. Beautiful reminder of where, what we're all going towards one day. Amen? All right. I'm satisfied with just a cottage view. Till my trophy 
days at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross And exchange it someday for a crown In the old rugged cross Stained with blood so divine Such a wonderful beauty I see For it was on that old cross Jesus suffered and died to pardon and sanctify me. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. To the old rugged cross I will ever be true, its shame and reproach gladly bear. Then he'll call me someday to my home far away, where his glory forever I'll share. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for the many gifts that you give us, Lord. And thank you, Lord, for that you're always there for us in the trying times, Lord, that we can depend on you to be with us and help us through anything what they're going through, Lord. And, Lord, we'd like to, as a church, Lord, lift up those that are hurting right now, Lord, and be with them and know that if anything there is, Lord, that we'll be always be there to help them and pray with them, Lord, and to guide them through each and everything, Lord. As we take up this collection, Lord, that we help those further know you like we do, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. As the ushers are making their way through the pews, we're going to sing, It is well. It is well.
sing that in front of me. We'll be thrown into the midst of the sea. Through it all, through it all, my eyes are on you. Through it all. What a song of assurance. No matter what is going on in life, you just need to focus on him. All of us have been through difficult times, haven't we? We've been through difficult stages and life has thrown some curveballs at us that are just seem impossible.
impossible to deal with. And I can honestly say that faith always seems to surface in those moments. And it's that faith that we always draw from to get us through and remind us that it is well, right? God is in control. All right. Can we have the children come forward now uh, for Children's Church? They're going to be going with Miss Nicole. Love lady. Miss Nicole. <laughs> that Nicole. The other Nicole. Nicole, love lady. Big Nicole, yeah. not little Nicole. Big Nicole. Nicole. It's little Oscar, little Nicole. We got this. <laughs> All right, so we're going to continue then. Oscar's going to do a three-part series of uh, uh, taking us through the book of Habakkuk. And so this is part two. And uh, does anybody have a, does anybody need a bulletin? If you need a bulletin, raise your hand. All right, Chuck will get one to you. Anybody else need a bulletin? All right, if you notice, there's no points. All right, just blanks. Just blanks, so just take notes as you feel led. All right, Oscar? All right, yes, brother, sir. share with us. All right, well, good morning, almost good afternoon. Uh, it's great to be with you all. Again, this is the, uh, the second part of my three-week series of going through the book of Habakkuk. Uh, before I get started, I do want to apologize beforehand. Uh, I am, yesterday I started having a bad headache day, and uh, usually that happens I can't read too well. But, uh, you know, I just keep it in faith, keep it in prayer. If I do stumble a lot, please forgive me. Um, like my anxiety is going like pretty high right now, a little nervous. Uh, but it, it's just, man, my head's killing me. But uh, again, you got to share God's word, right? Don't let anything stop us. Um, last time I was here when I preached, uh, I read out of the CSB, uh, the Christian Standard Bible. I was, as I was preparing for this one, I like to use a parallel Bible. So I brought out my, uh, my parallel Bible. The parallel Bible has different uh, versions. Different, it has uh, the New King James Version. The uh, English Standard Version, the, the uh, New Living Translation, and the message. It's just a way for you to get through and get the, main, the, the right message, right? To cross-reference the words. So if you do not have a parallel Bible and you just want to just really figure out what God's Word is saying, sometimes different words hit you a different way, uh, I highly suggest go find yourself a parallel Bible. Uh, when I went to seminary school, I went to half Price Bookstore, and there was like three of them there, so I pulled one that wasn't as beat up. But again, if it's beat up, it means it was used. Amen? Amen. So today we're going to be going through Habakkuk uh, chapter 2. I'm going to be reading out of the ESV, the English Standard Version. We're going to read all of Habakkuk, and then we're going to pray real quick. And uh, we're going to allow God's, uh, I guess God's words, right, to help us out, to impact us, right? But uh, last week we talked about sometimes, like Habakkuk saying, hey, the problem is too big, right? Uh, the problem is too big, we forget to have our faith and trust in God, right? God's promise, God's words, God's love, God's grace, mercy, everything. Sometimes we forget about those things because we're just so focused on the problem. Like, oh, the Chaldeans are doing this. You're bringing the Chaldeans to mess with us? I can't believe you, God. Aren't you love and mercy? Don't you got to stay away from evil? You know, um, sometimes we say that, right? Sometimes we come to God and we put him on trial, right? We're saying, God, you're supposed to be love. Uh, kindness, goodness, everything good, but I have this evil coming with me. I see this, right? What do we say? Uh, God's people, Habakkuk, have a gunshot wound, right? But they put a Band-Aid, went across the aisle, and looked at some of the sprained ankle. They're worried about the sprained ankle instead of what? The main problem of what? The gunshot wound to them, right? They haven't fixed that. So again, God said, hey, I'm going to send the Chaldeans to go, and just like a doctor does with a, a scalpel, cut out that cancer, right? Even though the scalpel's a knife, it cuts, there's blood, it's, it's pretty bad, right? But there's going to be something good coming out of this. So let's read chapter 2 of Habakkuk. And again, please forgive me. Um, I love y'all. That's it. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, chapter 2, it starts with, I will take my stand at my watch post and station myself on the tower and look out to see what he will say to me and what I will, and what I will answer concerning my complaint. Right? This, uh, and the Lord answered me, Write the vision, make it plain on tablets, so he may run who reads it. For still the vision awaits its appointed time. It hastens to the end. It will not lie. If it seems slow, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. Behold, his soul is puffed up. It is not upright within him, but the righteous shall live by his faith. 
Moreover, wine is a traitor, an arrogant man who is never at rest. His greed is, is as wide as Sheol. Like death, he has, never, he has never enough. He gathers for himself all nations and collects all as his own, all peoples. Shall not all these take up their taunts against him? with scoffing and the riddles for him, and say, Woe to him who heaps up what is not his own, for how long? And loads himself with pledges. Would not your debtors suddenly arise? And those awake who will make you tremble? tremble? Then, you will make, then you will be spoiled for them, because you have plundered many nations. All the remnant of the peoples shall plunder you. For the blood of man and violence to the earth, to cities, and to all who dwell in them. Woe to him who gets evil gain for his house to set his nest on high, to be safe from reach of harm. You have devised shame for your house by cutting off many peoples. You have forfeited your life, for the stone will cry out from the wall and the beam from the woodwork respond. Woe to him who builds up a town with blood and founds a city on iniquity. Behold, is it not from the Lord of hosts the people's labor merely for fire, and nations weary themselves for nothing? For each will be filled with the knowledge of glory of the Lord as waters cover the sea. Woe to him who makes his neighbors drink. You pour out your wrath and make them drunk in order to gaze at their nakedness. You will have your fill of shame instead of glory. Drink yourself and show your uncircumcision. The cup in the Lord's right hand will come around to you, and utter shame will come upon your glory. The violence done to Lebanon will overwhelm you, as will the destruction of the beasts that terrified them. For the blood of man and violence to the earth, to cities, and all who dwell within them. What profit, is, what profit is an idol when its maker has shaped it? A metal image, a teacher of lies, for its maker trusts in his own creation when he makes speechless idols. Woe to him who says to a wooden thing, Awake to a silent stone, Arise! Can this teach? Behold, it is overlaid with gold and silver, and there is no breath at all in it. But the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this wonderful day, Lord. Lord, we're thankful, we're thankful for this conversation you've had with Habakkuk that is put in this Bible, Lord. Or sometimes we're like Habakkuk, Lord, and we forget to keep our eyes on you, right? Just like chapter 1 says, we want to look at all the evil and not look at the evil inside us. We forget about the problem going on. We forget about putting our trust in you, Lord. We get consumed, overwhelmed by what is happening all around us, Lord. Lord, may our eyes be focused on you, Lord. May your words come through your humble servant, me, Lord, and just share with one another. May your words stir up something in our hearts to allow, to allow us to depart to serve. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So the righteous will live by his faith. At this point in Habakkuk, God has been called to Habakkuk's courtroom. The prophet has questioned God's goodness, his wisdom, and holiness. He wonders why God is going to send the Babylonian armies to invade Israel and how that could be a just decision. Wasn't he so mad saying, hey, they're, they're the evil ones. Why are you going to hurt your chosen people. Remember, we're the Israelites, right? We're the Israel. You're, we're God's people. Everyone knows the Babylonians are ruthless and evil. And how could God allow them to run rampant over the nations? The main idea of this passage is that God makes a promise to Habakkuk and the world that Babylon and all who imitate her will one day answer to God for all the evil they have committed. God responds here to Habakkuk's accusations by assuring him that Babylon's, Babylon's crimes would not go unpunished. Remember he's saying, hey, how could you look at this evil? Aren't you supposed to wait, stay away from evil? You can't be where evil is at, God. Right? Aren't you full of love? Remember he's, he's, he's throwing these claims at God saying, hey, what's going on? Right? 
earlier this morning in Sunday school, we talked about Jacob wrestling with God, right? Habakkuk was kind of doing that, but with words. Through five woes of judgment, God detailed the evil of Babylon better than Habakkuk did. But before those woes, God summarized Babylon. His soul was puffed up, is not upright within him. Babylon was filled with self-assurance and pride. They thought no one could overcome them and that they could have their way with societies of the earth. But God saw their arrogance and pledged to execute justice on them. But if that's the future of the wicked, what about the righteous? God also had a summary for them. The righteous will live by his faith. Verse 4. Many of you know this is a significant statement in Christianity. The New Testament writers quoted it often as many ways to explain that we can only become righteous in God's sight through belief in the gospel. And after saving faith, should want to live in continual trust in God. Those are found in Galatians chapter 3, verse 11. Romans chapter 1, verse 17, and Hebrews chapter 10, verse 38 are stating those claims. And in the 16th, and the 16th century, century, this verse aided Martin Luther in his departure from Roman Catholicism. One day as a pilgrim in Rome, Luther visited a staircase the church said was miraculously transported from Pontius Pilate's judgment hall in Jerusalem. The custom for pilgrims was to get on their knees and crawl up the harsh stone steps, kissing stains the church claimed were left by Christ's blood. As Luther was crawling, the statement that the righteous would live by their faith popped into his mind. He realized he was trying to work his way to God when no work would do. He realized salvation and life before God comes by faith. So he got up, left for his home in Germany, and became a major contributor to the Reformation. He was free. For the original readers, the faith God described meant trusting God's plan to judge Israel with the Babylonian armies and believing what God said about Babylon's ultimate destiny. Even when they were in exile 600 miles from Jerusalem. They needed to be confident that God was not done with his people. Though it looked like the world at at its powers were winning while God and his people were losing, the righteous lived by faith, and the opposite is true. The world and its powers would and will face an ultimate day of reckoning. This brand of faith produces a solid steadfast in you, steadfastness in you. It is a faith that leads to faithfulness, a strong conviction that God is worth following no matter what unfolds around you. It generates an assurance and confidence about God's unseen promises. It generates an able-like thankfulness to God. It generates an Enoch-like walk with God. It generates a Noah-like obedience to God. Right, Noah? I had to. I was waiting for that moment. We have a Noah here. Yes. It generates an Abraham-like endurance that waits for God. And it generates an Isaac-like submission to God. It generates a Joseph-like anticipation for the permanent future city of God. This type of faith produces a beautiful brand of life in us. So how can we develop this level of trust? This chapter shows us three ways. So all the people we talked about that faith, they're all found in the Old Testament, right? Habakkuk was a minor prophet. He prophesied what God said, right? He went to the watchtower where he talks to God. He comes back down and he says, what is going on? Just like a pastor is here to, to, be, a, a, to be a servant, to be a shepherd, to help guide us along the way, we see what is going on. But sometimes... We forget, and we focus on the problem too much, right? So so many people say, hey, well, my faith is dwindling down because this problem is so big. We make a grain of sand look like the size of the rock of Gibraltar. Unmovable, unbreakable, unshakable. That's at that moment where we got to say, I let our faith and trust focus on God and what God said. So first, the passage shows us that we must patiently wait for God. How many of us have patience? 
I know I'm the first one to say no. I prayed for patience and I got married. <laughs> I was like, man, all right, we don't pray for patience anymore. Right? <laughs> now my wife, she's the opposite. She has plenty of patience. She could be on the phone. The way to test your patience is get on the phone, call a customer service number, and if you wait the hour and a half to talk to someone, you got patience. I'm waiting five, top six minutes, and I'm hanging up, and I'm getting mad, all right? So we got to have patience. Habakkuk began realizing this right after, his, after, his, uh, his deliver, after talking to God in the first chapter. He said, I will take my stand at my watch post and station myself on the tower and look out to see what he will say to me, and I will answer it concerning my complaint. Found in verse 1. The prophet had a sense that he needed to wait for God's corrective word, his divine perspective. So he went to his proverbial watchtower and waited for God to speak. The concept of a prophet in a watchtower is a biblical one. It's found in Isaiah, found in Ezekiel, and Hosea. But Habakkuk's first step is one we can also take. When our reasoning with God or arguments against God take us as far away as they can, when we become stuck on the problem as we see it, we need to patiently wait for instruction. We must go to our watchtower and wait for God. A watchtower is elevated above a place it protects. And we need, a place, we need, and we need places to detach us from the regular flow of life so we can get perspective and help. We need our Bibles, our churches, our prayer closets to provide watchtower moments. Like a student stuck on a problem... We got to raise our hand. We got to wait for help of a tutor or a teacher. So we must raise our hand and begin looking for God's perspective. Because sometimes God's ways aren't our ways, right? We want it our way. We want it this way. I can't, I can't stop stressing about talking to my youth, right? Say we go, to, we go to God like he's Burger King, right? We can have it our way. No, we can't. God's ways are his ways, and they're great ways. Speaking about the tablets, as Habakkuk waited... God began to answer. Before giving his full perspective, God said, Write the vision. Make it plain on tablets so he may run who reads it. Habakkuk would have understood that God wanted him to write down everything he said so that prophetic runners can take the message of God to God's people. God wanted everyone in Israel to know that, that though the Chaldean and Babylonian armies was coming to discipline Israel, he would one day execute judgment on them. And then as God's people heard God's word, they would run into the, in the truth God declared. Daniel is a good example of an Israelite who ran with the vision of God, the vision God spoke in Habakkuk. During the long years in Babylon, Daniel trusted that God's story was not finished and that one day his kingdom would come. He ran in the understanding that as powerful as Nebuchadnezzar and all the kings after him were, their power would not last forever. One day, God would establish a forever kingdom and reign without end. But this is another fine way to patiently wait for God. Get into his word. Get further clarity on his truth and promises. Cling to them so that you could run through life with the correct mentality another way we should patiently wait is with patience god told israel what would happen to babylon and it seemed that that is what's going to happen to the world system as well revelation 17 18 we learn of another babylon will be destroyed right before christ's return but we don't like to wait there is, there is an example of this importance in the book of Jeremiah. He had said things similar to Habakkuk, but in greater detail and with more prophetic flourish. One day, with a farming yoke made of oxen on his neck, Jeremiah announced that the Babylonians would yoke the people into slavery for 70 years, 70, and, 70 years. But a false prophet named Hananiah 
took the yoke off his head, broke it, and told everyone that God would break Babylon in the span of two years. Who do you think they trusted? We're impatient people. They went with Hananiah. But we must not be like them. Instead, we should trust in God's slow-moving justice. Verses 6 through 20 talk about the woes. But another way the passage shows us to live by faith is to sing the five woes God pronounced over evil Babylon. Before thinking about each woe, I want you to notice something important. God is not the singer, but those waiting for justice are. God said, Shall not these take up their taunts against Babylon with scoffing, scoffing and riddles for him? In verse 6, what this means is that Israelites and other nations that Babylon have destroyed were meant to sing these woes with confidence that God would defend them. Amen? But what did they, but what did they sing? In the first woe, they sang that the plunderer would be what? Plundered. Babylon had taken the nations, their wealth, the land, and people. They did not belong to them. They had plundered, but one day they will be plundered. The Babylonians had thought they were robbing the bank over and over and over and over again, but God said they were actually taking out loans over and over and over again, and one day they would pay. In the second woe of the song, it says that one day harm will eventually suffer harm. Verses 9 through 11 God depicted that them as birds trying to set their nest on high so they could be out of harm's reach. Everyone is entitled to build and save and prosper, but these Babylonians created their secure positions by destabilizing other people and nations. God even said, stones and beams they stole from the lands would testify against them. Amen. Only God could say that, and only God can make that a promise, saying that, hey, stones and beams, things that don't speak, are going to testify against the Babylonians. The third woe of the song says that the oppressor will end up with nothing. This is found in verse 12 through 14. They had built their towns and founded their cities with the blood of laborers and slaves who were given no choice in the matter. God said building a society that way was like building a bonfire. It feels like you're getting somewhere, feels like you built it up high, but it will soon be burned to ashes. All their efforts will be lost. Their future was nothingness. The fourth woe of the song says that those who promote rampant sensuality would, would be exposed. Verses 15 through 17. This, way, this was God's way of saying that the Babylonian society and system promotes everything that defies God. But God saw all their violence, including the violence they did to the forest and animal species of Lebanon, and would judge it. And the last woe of the song says that those who try to make their own gods will one day hear the voice of the true God. A major reason if someone invents their own religion is so that they can call their gods, they can tell what their gods what to say. But the true God will have the final word. Each woe is worth our contemplation today. Each In each, the actions of Babylon should make us sorrowful. But, our sorrow, but to our sorrow, we can add the joy of knowing God will bring every nation, every wrong right. The movies understand this song. When the villain or the bully or unjust or a cheater is revealed, what do we want to happen to that person? We want justice, right? And we want it right away because we're impatient people, right? Going after maybe a uh, three-hour movie, three-and-a-half-hour movie, it's too long. We want it right away. And often that's precisely the way the script plays out. In under three hours, justice is served. But this song helps us wait with patience for the justice that God promised to deliver, and it is coming. I find myself, you know, having less, less patience 
looking at movies, because I love going to the movies, looking at the, looking at the time of the movie. Man, two hours, close to three hours, that's too long of a movie. I don't have that much patience to sit down and just relax. Right? I remember going to movies as a little kid with my dad. And I think I, think I got maybe impatience from my dad, right? He's like, hour and a half, hour 45, that's a good enough movie. Now, I might say I'm kind of old. I am not old, old, old. But I remember where, where long movies would come in, what, two VHSs, right? It wasn't just one little VHS set. It was two. And they became, what, two DVDs, right? So I remember watching the movie, oh, my goodness, Lonesome Dove. All right, I was on two, two cassettes. So me and my dad, we watch the first one, and we get impatient, we finish it, we go do something else, and we come back at night and finish the second one. So I think that's where I learned my impatience from, right? I, don't, I, don't, I can't sit down forever and say, I'm going to listen to this and watch this, right? Hebrews 11, 9 and 10 says, By faith, Abraham went to live in the land of promise. As in a foreign land living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, heirs with them in the same promise, for he was looking forward to the city that has foundations, whose designer and builder is God. We need to just keep silence. But we are often like little children in the back of the SUV saying, Dad, are we there yet? How long until we get there? Right? Or maybe a wife who's on the pastor side saying, How much longer do we get there? Are you paying attention to the GPS? I'm not talking about my wife. I'm talking about my sisters. <laughs> but we're like that, saying, win, 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 God, win, God, right? I want it now. I want justice now. I want to see them, right? When someone does us wrong, right, we don't, worse, we, don't, we don't hope for the worst for them, but we just want to see them trip and fall, right, on their face, right in front of us, right, just so we can get that last laugh. We're impatient people. In his last word in Habakkuk, God said, the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. This exhortation is in direct contrast with what came before it. God said the Babylonian made idols that couldn't speak. The Babylonians could say whatever they wanted to their gods without any hope of a response. But we must be silent because God speaks. He is alive. He is working. He is promising and he is judging. Like Habakkuk, we can replace our complaints and doubts with the firm expectation that God will come and establish the kingdom. In a classic scene from C.S. Lewis, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, if you have not read those as a little kid, those are like one of my favorite books to read. Then we came to movies, right? So which one am I going to go to? Read a long book or watch a movie? Watch the movie, right? If you have not seen the movie or read the books, there's a part where it talks about this, right, about the evil queen, and Aslan, who's supposed to be God, right? Mr. and Miss Beaver played, an, a, a, a played as host to the children, right? They came to the land. It was Peter, Susan, Edmund, and Lucy. And they had discovered a magical word of Narnia. And they're talking with the beaver helped them acclimate. While they talked, the beavers let slip that their words were under a, a witch's curse that she had the power to turn her enemies into stone, that they were awaiting the return of Aslan, a fierce lion who would defeat her in battle. But Edmund asked, Won't she turn him into stone too? Miss Beaver replied, Turn him into stone? If she can stand on her two feet and look him in the face, it will be the most she can do and more than I expect of her. She he says, No, no. He'll put all to rights as it is in the old rhyme in these parts. Wrong will be right when Aslan comes to sight. As the sound of his roar, sorrows will be no more. When he bares his teeth, winter meets its death. And when he shakes his mane, we shall, we shall have spring again. A major, a major factor in Christian life is our questions about evil and injustice in the world. Is that what is God doing? When will he react? We must be like these kids. We must have the faith like Miss Beaver. No one can stand up against God. And if they do, that's probably way more than we expect, right? Like Habakkuk, we must trust God's promise. And just as Mr. and Miss Beaver awaited Aslan, we must, we must wait God's we must we must await God's wise, certain, and successful judgment of all evil. 
We must believe a day is coming when the knowledge of his glory will cover the earth as the waters cover the sea, as in verse 14. His fame will run from pole to pole, of, and every nation, culture, and society will be in allegiance to his name. And in trusting silence, we must, make, we must wait for the day when Christ comes to rule the nations with a rod of iron, when the lion will lie, will lie down with the lamb, and when the whole world will flow to his house in adoration and worship. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, again, we just thank, we're thankful for this conversation with Habakkuk. Sometimes it is us, Lord, that we want, we want the results right now, Lord. We want your judgment right now. We want the wrongs made right right now. Lord, I ask that you will help us have this patience, Lord. That you, that you will help us to, the first thing we do like Habakkuk is to run to our watchtower. That we dig deep into our prayer closet. We dig deep into the Bible, what your words say, the everlasting truth. That sometimes the mean people are like the Chaldeans and Babylonians, that they're, they're all around us. That we may be going against the tide. We're asking God, when, 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 that you may help us dig deeper in our roots and have the faith of having patience in what you say, Lord. That all wrong will be, will be made right. All nations will follow you. And the lion will lie down with the lamb one day. May we focus on this, this truth and this promise you have given us, Lord. We thank you, Lord. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, thank you, brother. That's, that's the... Uh, Second part, we've got one more to go next week. How many of you guys pre-read Habakkuk 2? Oh, just kidding, don't raise your hand. All right, I know there were some of you who did. Pre-read it. Now, it's, it's just poetic language, right? This is in the Hebrew, it's very, it's, 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 it's poetry. Uh, and there's a lot of figurative language in here. But I think it would help if you read it and came in and kind of heard sort of Oscar break this down and, uh, and, and, and explain it a bit. So. We've got one more. It's, it's just three chapters in Habakkuk. Uh, if you can, pre-read for next week. We look forward to seeing each and every one of you back. I pray that you have a blessed week. And indeed, I think we can all work on our patience. How many of you guys struggle with patience? Now, I do want to see some. I want to, I want to see a show of hands. How many of y'all struggle with patience? Let's be honest now. Whether it's at home, at work, whatever, yeah, we all do. I'm sure we all do. Some of us are blessed, like Oscar said, his wife. I was blessed with a very patient wife as well. And, and it's funny how God brings people together, right? You know, that sort of balances life out because if two hotheads live together, ain't nothing going to get done. <laughs> right? Let me hear you guys. Amen. All right. Let's all stand before we depart and uh, go out for the week. Again, I pray that God would bless each and every one of you richly, uh, that, that he would just, his spirit would just, just grow in you in a mighty way. And this week would be one where you'd come away with an experience where he's able to reveal himself to you and how he can interact through you and you can interact through the world. He can interact using you. You're his servant. All right? Let's depart by singing the doxology together. I don't think we need the words if we don't have them. Um, yeah, we do. All right, wonderful. Let's sing together. Praise God from whom... All blessings flow, praise him all creatures here below, praise him above the heavenly host, praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, amen. Have a blessed week.